days and I will be on my way. Hang on a minute, a couple days and I will have my say. Hang on a minute, a couple days and I will be on my way. Hang on a minute, a couple days and I will have my say, y'all. Hang on a minute, a couple days and I will be on my way. Hang on a minute, a couple days and I will have my say, y'all. Hang on a minute, a couple days and I will be on my way. Strong will 
and time When the light Casts over your shoulder A new moon In your eyes I will be strong I will be sober I'm your Hey, how's it going, everybody? I'm Ben from Universal Audio, and welcome to a very special UA Live episode. Uh, we're hanging out with Chape Hope today, and he's going to kind of walk us through how to be building beats inside of Luna, integrating analog synths, analog drum machines, NPCs, all the cool, fun toys that he's got in his, in his studio. Uh, he's going to show us how he's integrated that all together, brought it into Luna, and made a sick track for us to check out today. So, What's up, man? How you doing, Ben? I'm doing great. How you doing, Shay? I'm good. How's the universal audio world? And I'm saying hello to not only you, but to the world. How's to the everybody? whole world. Yeah, everybody world. got a bunch of people in the chat. People are people are excited to uh, excited to see how you how you're getting along, man. Good. Um, I'm good, man. You know, COVID. Uh, one of the things that's great about well, obviously, sad times in terms of people who you know family members and uh, not doing well or have lost their lives. You know, so definitely want to send prayers and blessings to everybody and their family. And hopefully everybody's making it through. Mm -hmm. But on the positive side, just having time, you know, at home and with the family has really given me time to just really sit, you know, with my machines and my, you know, my computers and my synths and really spend quality time. So, yeah, you got, you've gotten, gotten more acquainted with, uh, with all the, all your friends in the room. Yeah, and you know, I got you know, my dog's name is Luna, so you know, it's only right that I get acquainted with Luna. So me and Luna gotten friendly over over COVID. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, she and, get and, she get her royalty checks yet for uh, for the name? Yeah, right. I know. You know, <laughs> we, you know, we're working on that. We're also trying to you know have her be the mascot or the the you know the the, the face of it. You know what I mean? Uh -huh, yeah. Sending in, you know, we're getting her shot, her head shots done. <laughs> we're sending all that in. Nice. Um. Thank you guys for this update. Um, for those out in, in, in UA world and people tuning in, um, right from the one of the first things I asked Ben for when they <laughs> set, when I got Luna and we set up the shop the first time, mm -hmm. they brought they find they gave me in this update. So I am so thankful. Okay. Um, they gave me my MIDI sync. Yep. So we are now able um, in in the latest update, which is. What's the number? Uh, 1.1. 1.1. In our Luna 1.1 update, we have groups. Mm -hmm. We have some other good tricks. We have bookmarks. 
We have um, what's the other one? We we can save new versions. Yep. But my favorite is we have MIDI Sync. MIDI Sync. I um, know, man. It, you and me, man. We were we were so ready for this to happen. Yeah. So um, for those that don't know, let me give you a little bit of my process before I play this track. Mm -hmm. So the way I like to work is I don't like just being in the box. Okay. Um, I know we're in this modern world of all these VSTs and all these cool things the laptop can do, but I come from the, the world of hardware. Yeah. And I really grew up and came up through the MIDI era. So I started on an M uh, SP1200 and then I went to the MPC3, well, MPC62. Mm -hmm. before the FEC 3000, which I still have right there in my system. Um, everything was MIDI based every, you know, everything was, you know, you had uh, A, B, C out of your MPC into your sound modules. And, you know, you had yeah. so everything was through, you know, MIDI clock and, and so forth. Um, so my system, so I still work from that perspective. I, I still mm -hmm. sync, you know, I sync everything. Um, I have an, a Moog 1 that I sync. I yeah. have an OB6 that I sync. I have the MPC Live that I sync. I have the MPC 3000 that I sync. Mm -hmm. I have a Roland TR-808, the new version, that I sync. Mm -hmm. I have countless electron boxes that I sync back there, the analog rhythm and, and the DigiCat. So for me, that gave me life again with Luna to be able to connect everything. Yeah. So previously, you know, I guess kind of the the old the the old school workflow when you were when the MPC was really the heart and brain of it, that would be what was driving your whole session, right? So that would be not just MIDI clock, but also your you know sample sequences that are happening inside the box, also yep. running MIDI sequences that would trigger external synths and work and you know keyboards and sound modules, et cetera, right? Exactly. And let me even take it a step further. When I was working with Dre there was uh, four or five of us simultaneously working. So mm -hmm. Dre was the hub of it. So he would have his MPC. He would, he would be the master. Then we'd all have MPCs slaves to Dre's MPC. <laughs> you know what I mean? With our perspective rigs attached to our MPC. Oh, shit. So, so then he would, he would press play and the whole room would the whole start room playing. Would, oh, yeah. You know, you're talking Scott Storch, Mike Elizondo, myself, Mark mm -hmm. Batson, all of us in sync. Wow. Great controlling. From, yeah. So there were, you know, five NPCs in the room all in sync. Dude, you know? and that, I mean, that's, uh, that's, it's an old technology, but it really, it's, it's fairly, yeah. it's solid, right? It, it's kind of one of those, like, you plug it in, you line it, you know, if you, if you've got it calibrated right, it just, you press play and it yeah, goes. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's, especially in the world I come from in terms of, like, say, RB and hip hop and so on and so forth, it was like a staple. It's like the foundation of the sound of, like, late 80s 90s especially you know mm -hmm. a lot of great great records all those are all mpc records you know yeah rodney jerk rodney jerkin's one of the you know great r&b producers of of our, my generation um still uses an mpc 3000 to control this you know even with logic or whatever he's using he still uses M the 3000 as his control center yeah I don't do that. <laughs> yeah. So what's your what's I, what, I was like? What's your mod? So what's kind of your modern take on on that workflow for yourself? So my modern is is the reverse engine, right? Before mm -hmm. the MPC controlled everything, and now I do it the other way, right? Where the computer controls everything, but I've still I still track and sync. Like meaning, a lot of these even like say an MPC live, you can export. I I could just export right as you know as waves my stems right out of it and load it into Luna, mm -hmm. but that detracts from the opportunity to be able to run it just like the way I would track it old school, right? Yeah. Old school, I would go through an SSL channel or a Neve channel or whatever, you know, pre I wanted to use and EQ it and do this and that. So with Luna and, and we're in sync, I'm able to operate just the same way, right? Mm -hmm. I'm coming through, you know, I'm coming through console, I'm setting up what I want it or I'm tweaking it, you know, I'm putting tape on it and saturating it. I'm doing these things. And then, I track it, I track it old school, I solo the sound, like I might have 10 tracks in the MPC, mm -hmm. but I solo each sound uh -huh. and track it individually. Yep. And then you just, are you just capturing kind of like a four or eight bar loop or however long the sequence is, you just yeah, kind of capture that snip? And I usually overdo it. So whatever the sequence is, if it's four bars, then I capture nine bars. Mm -hmm. If it's two bars, I capture five bars. I always over compensate just because you know if there's any kind of drift or any kind of lag or anything sometimes and sometimes i might like that you know if, if it actually happens yeah luna's pretty tight though i didn't have any of that so mm -hmm. um 
And the only thing I think we talked about this, the only thing and when I played the session, I'll point out which sound that was that I had to do a little, um, you know, you know, I'll come to our we'll go. Let's go show our yep. our MIDI. K, uh, sorry, let me go to my, let's go show our MIDI sync. So we have our delay and there's only one sound, which I'll point out which one that I even had to, you know, use some delay on. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, so I like that, the fact that, and now, for instance, uh, if I had all the gear hooked up, I would have, you know, seven Neos going or something like that. And mm-hmm. I could have them all. And in the future, when you when we show this, it will be about six or seven of these <laughs> Neos going. Yeah. You know? Let's, uh, well, man, that's, so it's really cool to hear. So you're doing, so you're building, so now Luna's the clock. Whenever you press play on Luna, your devices start yeah. going, and then you're doing the sequencing inside of the NPC. Uh, for you said you've got a three thousand. You've also got a live. Um, for for today's example, what uh, which one were you using? A little bit of both. Oh yeah, mostly, nice. mostly the live. I would say mostly the live, but but a little bit of both because there's some sounds that I have in the three thousand that I don't have duplicated anywhere. Mm-hmm. So to get those, I had to you know I had to pull up the three thousand. Um, there's a particular kick in it that I like. Um, and I'll play everything. So maybe right now I should play the track. Yeah, let's uh, let's, let's show them what we're working with. All right, looks like it's two tracks. I like that, right? So it looks <laughs> like it's two tracks. Let's play first. Late night vibes. So mm-hmm. you know, I early morning, had, late night vibe. <laughs> yeah, I might have a little Japanese whiskey. You know, just a little or something. Uh-huh. I would like to point out that is the UA move bass coming in. Good. I needed it to breathe for a minute. As I brought in the choir. That's that's my Hans Zimmer moment. Yeah. Just drops in, right? It's supposed to be a change on the third eight away. I apologize. I think I did, I think I put it in, and I think when I chopped it, I took it out. Whiskey. Um, now I want to expand for everybody to see, because I know it looks like this, but this is the magic of groups, right? I can consolidate everything, just look at what I want to look at. But if I want to see the whole thing, let me turn the groups back on. Let's expand the, the session so people can see what's going on. And I'll I'll go through everything and explain what's what. I think we totally have you know, five, We have fifteen tracks in the majority of the time. So that's that's my like 11 p.m. Mm-hmm. Che pop on the MTV. <laughs> the Che pop, I love che, it. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, but let's go through it. Let's let let's talk about it. I want to isolate a, kind of what's going on here. Mm-hmm. The majority of this track, as you can see, is mostly drums. Yeah. So um, all of these drums were tracked in MIDI sync. Mm-hmm. So if I isolate some of the sounds, and you can kind of hear the dirtiness of it. So this right here, I call it. I really call it a metal snare, and then you know it's going through an, a lexicon reverb and a little bit of compression on it. Yeah. But that's a that's a three MPC three thousand sound. Gotcha. So there's certain sounds to me that are, uh, I guess you could say, they're almost classic sounds to me. Any any of the MPC three thousand sounds, I don't really create too many new sounds on the MPC three thousand. Mm-hmm. That's usually me being a little nostalgic. <laughs> trying to, and going back i do still sample on the 3000 i was gonna say do you pull new stuff into it yeah i pull new stuff into it just because i want that that 16-bit sound and certain things i do not pull which is probably sad and probably lazy i do not pull new i do not sample new drum sounds in it mm-hmm. i've gotten to the point where i can manipulate drum sounds really well so i can make i can make a sound almost sound like it's an mp3 and live and I can, you know, I'm, I can work a lot faster in live, mm-hmm. or even in Logic's new, in, you know, in Logic's like drum. Logic has this cool little drum thing that I use. Um, actually, it's not Logic; it's a, a native. Oh uh, yeah. Battery. Mm-hmm. So 
just for, for just for immediate gratification. So I'll throw things in battery real quick and manipulate it. So then on the 3000, you basically, you've, it's almost a set instrument now, right? Where it's got the samples that you've kept yep. loaded on there, ready to go. So it's, it's now, it has its own sound, its own vibe that doesn't, you know, you go to it when you know, oh, I need that one. It's, it's sitting yeah. over here on my 3000. And, and, and honestly, for me, because, because it's something I started on and it's nostalgic, it's, it literally is inspiration for me. So, uh, many times I usually start a track with melody. Mm -hmm. Um, but in this particular case, I started the track, which is why this one is at, at the top. I started it with that sound. Yeah. Off the so I let that sound kind of dictate, like I said, and, um, you know, uh, I was telling Ben this before we started, um, UA, UAD <laughs> audience, UA audience, um, that this is actually the third vibe I made because the first two I didn't like. And the, this vibe was started by the MPC 3000. Mm -hmm. And literally, I plugged in the MPC 3000, and this is the one that gave me the vibe that where I went. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Let me, let me go to the next sound because it's kind of this one's a little weird. And so that snare is MP. That's the I'm sorry, that hi hat is the MPC live where you can see you, know, you can almost hear that it's a little thin and it's a little more of a modern trappish kind of a kind of a one. Yeah. But now let's go back to this kick. And and I want to shout out on the kick, I have to shout out Jason Joshua because Jason Joshua has a preset on the E channel SSL. So if you guys, if anyone who has the SSL plugin, there's a Jason Joshua thump kick preset that I fucking love. Yeah. Uh, shout out to my man, mix engineer extraordinaire, Jason Joshua. So this is with full on cheat code right there. Oh yeah. This is you're you're getting it straight from the best. Oh man, I spent hours on this. I spent hours on this kick. <laughs> no, I took a I took a kick from the MPC three thousand and I put Jason Joshua's preset on it and it fucking sounds amazing. <laughs> and it just it just really gives me that fullness. Now, the key the, the problem with um taking a kick, boom bap kicks, if you will, like from hip hop from the nineties, if you will, they sound like so massive nowadays. They just sound out of place. They sound dated. Mm -hmm. They sound old school. They just don't sound like if I literally walked into Travis S Session Scott and I played a kick from the MPC, he'd be like, "What's that?" He'd be like, <laughs> "Okay, shit. I love everything else. Take the drums out of here." Uh -huh. True story. That actually happened. Um, <laughs> true story. So I've learned how to make these old school sort of like a sound like that kick with certain manipulation. In this case, the Jason Joshua preset mm -hmm. and, and turning it down a little bit. You know, I mean, in the '90s, we liked everything really, really loud. The kicks, as you know, were massive. Yep. This is. So pulling it down a little bit, and then the Jason Joshua, and I get the sound, and now it sounds like a modern kick. Now I sound like I'm in, I'm in the proper, <laughs> in the right, the right era now, in the right decade. You know what I mean? So that's what's going on in the kick. But I'm gonna keep going down because I want you guys to hear like some of the little subtleties that mm -hmm. uh, is a vo this is also MPC 3000. It's the vocal chop. Um, it says OBC kicks uh, keys. That's only because it was originally an OB6 key sound that I had synced that I did not like. And that was what the track was labeled before. And that was a previous track that didn't make it. So that's why it's labeled <laughs> OB6. But it's actually, you'll see, it's a chopped sound from the MPC 3000. Now, if you Where's hear that, the rhythm... It was like, where'd that delay come from on it? Yeah, now, it? The, now the delay is coming from the uh, Sound Toys Echo Boy. Mm -hmm. And originally I had it in like a really timed properly synced delay it was sounding too too on the grid to me yeah so what i did is i changed it to there's a preset in the in the, in the echo boy that's uh space echo mm -hmm. and the space echo is a little bit more random more of a, almost like a triplet well I, obviously i could have i could have just put it on the grid which, which is what i had at first but it was just so you know mm -hmm. there's, there's I, a value to go in milliseconds sometimes right where yeah, it's just like i needed it's... that i needed that fake <laughs> yeah that's exactly what's going on. so this is how the track started just like this and then i brought the kick in so this okay this is what i had i'm like all right so what am i what am i gonna do what you know what what is this track about what am i you mm -hmm. know figuring out so the next thing i came with i chopped the sample okay. um thank you for uh uh arcade i'll, I'll thank arcade for this nice. I, did, I did some manipulation with an arcade people love arcade i like it you know whether you use arcade whether you splice whether you use loop, you know, these, these preset sounds, mm -hmm. I would hope that you realize the rest of the world has access to these sounds and you <laughs> manipulate them. Yes. There's nothing wrong with just using a preset, but I'm, 
I'm old school. It's like the Roland 1080 used to come with presets. If you don't tweak the patch, it's just like, eh, it's like a brace to me. <laughs> when I when I hear like a sound from like FL and somebody just went into the Nexus preset, mm -hmm. it's just abrasive to me. So this is an this is an arcade sound, but it is manipulated. So now the track is starting to take shape. So this is the first VST I used. Everything else is chopped. Everything else was was in sync. Yeah. And so are you bringing stuff in as you're working, or are you kind of leaving stuff live on input and then coming up with ideas? Like, when do you start committing to these tracks? Um, you know what? Actually, I would say at this stage, I hadn't committed to anything. I yeah. hadn't started tracking the drums yet mm -hmm. because before these, actually, these drums changed multiple times. These sounds were changed in and out. I had auditioned different sounds and so forth. So mm -hmm. until... I, w I didn't start tracking the drums until after this this chopped re reversed sound. Gotcha. Then I started getting a feel for the textures. Like once I got this in, mm -hmm. I was like, okay, now I kind of really know what sounds. But the drums inspired everything. I would not have gotten to the chopped reverse sound without the drums. Yeah. And then and then I auditioned some different sounds once I had it. But the MPC drum stayed. That didn't go. The gotcha. first sound that I used that 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 what I call the metal snare mm -hmm. that never changed. Gotcha. Um, and well, any that, old head NPC guys right there, you probably know that snare. So what? <laughs> Hopefully, good for you. And yeah. I hope you have it. And I hope you, you still use it today. And I hope you find a way to use it. Because <laughs> any old head NPC, they all have that sound. Yeah. So. Well, that's really cool because, like, this to me, this is this is my favorite part of this process, right? Is being able to like come up, you know, start sketching out a sequence, just giving yourself a feel to then f discover a melody or discover a pad or you know, like to discover an element that's going to kind of define the the vibe of your track right and yeah. then but you don't have to necessarily commit to the groove right away you can leave it by leaving it on input and you know keeping it synced up now every time you press play you're you're right in the pocket yeah, you're figuring right there. out the and, other parts and, and, and exactly you could swap out sound swap out you can just audition things so that that's that was great so it's like a big sketch pad for me right and mm -hmm. i continued this through the whole process so as we as we build the track right so i get this reverse sound you hear i've got this sort of soft soft lead in the background mm -hmm. That, let me actually take so that's from this is from the ob6 which was in sync but this sounds not in sync this one i just played but this the original is... version of this was an arpeggiated version of this that i just didn't like it just wasn't as cool so i played the exact same thing but just straight so nice. this is just live going through and then we put something cool on it uh let's see what we, we put on it we put we put an echo boy on that as well mm -hmm. but it's sort of a different flavor going on just so that one it's a soft lead that's kind of ghosty. That was kind of the idea I wanted. Do you mind? Can you record and enable that track real quick? I'm curious what you put in for the record effects on that one too. On which one? Say that. Oh uh, yeah, on that soft lead. Vision, nice. Oh, I guess I was. It must have been loaded up from a different track. Oh yeah. yeah. So, oh no. So going through, I didn't actually. I didn't uh, on that one. I didn't have anything. Gotcha. On the the majority of things, the only thing I used pretty much was going in was on the drums which is probably not still there anymore, but primarily what I was going through on the drums was SSL. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, it, hopefully everyone really, because to me, like that's kind of the, the biggest benefit of this workflow. And you, you already alluded to it. You already said it straight up. I just want to reiterate it. It's being able to come out of these boxes, pass in true. through yeah. UAD plug, going through the, you know, the, the line inputs, being able to bump it through the SSL, uh, it, that's the classic sound. Like that is, yeah. That is what that, we're all that, used to that hearing. Is the, that is, honestly, that is really the the whole. That is everything. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, tracking it in is cool, but the biggest thing is like, you know, the fact that I'm going through an SSL, right? Like that's that's, and I'm able to manipulate it. I even, you know, in many cases, I EQ, I commit, you know, I'll EQ right then, which yeah. obviously I, I'm committing to that EQ. But I love the sound. If I'm getting a sound I love. It's almost like mixing as I'm writing. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, I've already got I've already got the sound how I want it. So even when it gets to the mix engineer, I'm like, you don't really need to do much to it. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I mix a lot of my own tracks, but that's. <laughs> yeah. But if I was passing it to a mix engineer, I'm mm -hmm. really saying this is how I want it to sound. Yeah. Or it's already, you know. Mm -hmm. so, it's, yeah. it's already it's and it also it, it inspires you to make your next move right yeah. by having the kick already have the fullness and have the sound that you're looking for on it you're not yep. a, you're not spending more time on it later down the road because you already you captured what you thought was great in the moment and that's now informed the other parts yeah. of your production 
Well, it does, and it, and it, it literally leads to the next part I was going to talk about. With because like when I, 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 I the next part the next sound I did after the soft lead was the Moog bass. By the way, it was just mm -hmm. they just show. Um, I did a few things to this. That's why I want to show it. But yeah. First of all, this is the mini Moog. Yep. This last last like, last time we got together, we were we were here geeking out on, on this boy. Yep. So one of the first things I do, there's an oxidized preset on the saturation. Mm -hmm. I, I do that. And then I have another. Um, yeah, well, I guess that's what I did. Normally, I also use, I have another trick that I use on the MIDI bass, which is the Devil Loke on uh -huh. Sound Voice. But I took it off because I liked the saturation gave me in on this pre, in the oxidized preset gave me so much of what I needed. Let me pop that up so you guys can see it. Is there a way to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see it on the uh, to the right side under yep. Uh, yep preset yep. drive drive synth bass plus three hard. Yep. So you could see exactly what the preset is right exactly right here, mm -hmm. and and that gave me the sound I wanted. So I took the devil look off. Nice. Because um, there is so, such a thing as too much saturation, right? <laughs> yeah, there there is, and it, it just it was just it was just redundant at that point. So it was like, you know, the devil look I like it because it gives a little coloration to the bass, mm -hmm. but. Um, and mind you, I'm giving you my cheat codes. I know. So. <laughs> People, tr trust me, the chat is well aware that they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're currently getting, getting all of the, they're going to walk away and be able to do the Shape Hope sound. And, and, I, and I, I have to give credit to Mix by Ali for that, TDE's mix mm -hmm. engineer, because he's the one that put me on a Devil Oak and using it. And, you know, and it's definitely been an amazing piece. So shout out to Sound Toys for that. I know this, that's another manufacturer, but either here, it's a good trick. Yeah. Um, um, with that said, then I added the bass. Oh, it'd be nice if I sold the bass. Um, and I wanted it to be warm and full, but I needed that saturation. It brought it to life. Because before that, it was nice. It was nice, but it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't as warm as I needed. And I needed that Mike Dean warm move bass thing going on. Yeah. So is there, is there a trick inside of the Mo Mini Moog to getting something, uh, to getting that sort of sound out of it? I mean, you can just within the mini Moog itself, you can really, you know, really get into the filter and the resonance and, and, and find your balance and mm -hmm. you can do your thing. But one of my immediate gratifications is the tape saturation. Yeah. Because, you know, and it's this, and I actually do the same thing in real life, too, meaning whether we're in the box or outside the box. Mm -hmm. I'll take that same. I'll take, you know, a Moog or the sub fatty. I'll run it in and I'll run it through some sort of saturation. Yep. Usually the 102 is my go-to. I know the stu you know, I got into some debate in my chat one day about the Studer versus the 102. And granted, I get it. The 102 is more of your, 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 you know, a lot of people look at it as the final, your, your, your final mix, you know, tape mm -hmm. device. And I get it, right? That's in real life. That's what a lot of people do. My personal preference is the 102 on channels over the Studer, but that's just me. Yeah. Everyone does their own thing. You, you, you know, everyone tweak it. What I also like about Luna is the tape saturation is right there, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I can have tape saturation on anything without losing the DSP. I think that's fucking amazing. Oops, excuse my language. Uh, but <laughs> I think that's amazing. I don't know, you know, we might have kids, you know what I mean? Kids, uh, I want to be kid friendly. I want to be family friendly. Exactly. Uh, Luna's got a little bit more of an adult audience so far. Uh, I hope so. I hope yeah. So. All right. Uh, Mar um, I got a question here from the yeah. question from the chat here uh, from Marcus. He's wondering uh, which SSL you're using for the drums. Uh, he's confused as if it's the six like a an SSL box or uh, the SSL plugin. Can you do you mind showing I, just like yep, I'm using the SSL plugin. I'll even show you on that kick. Mm -hmm. um, um, going in, I was just I I didn't have any presets on it. I was just tweaking the SSL you know the settings myself. So when I tracked in. Um, which I no longer have on the channels. I should have left it on the channels. I'm sorry about that. Well, uh, I think on the kick, if you go to the kick track, uh, this is one of the features of Luna is that when you re-record enable a track, it should it should keep the set the record settings as well. Okay. So if, if you record well, enable that, it might bring back the uh, the OG settings you had too. Well, I will check that, but I will show you on the kick. This is what I'm using. I'm using the E channel strip. Mm -hmm. uh, the E is my go-to. Um, everyone, like I said, everyone has their favorite stuff. Yep. The E-Channel Strip is something I'm very familiar with. There used to be an a E-Series board in Sony Studios in New York in the room that I used to use all the time. So it's it, it was a favorite of mine then, and it's a favorite of mine now. Um, so I, 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 can, I can really just go right in and dial in my settings. If, even if I don't use a preset, I, I know what I want. 
from it. So that's that's what I tend to use. Yeah. Um, everybody has their favorites, like I said. Yeah, um, it's, cool. it's just kind of like, roll, and it's interesting, like this preset's rolling off the top just at, and then adding bump. It's adding 100, 250, and then a little bit of compression. Uh, so it's nothing, you know, nothing groundbreaking, right? But it's it's uh, it's the combination of uh, of how you record it in the sample, you know, everything adds up to get you to the final sound. Yeah, I mean, you know, it really is, right? It's the if it's the in this case on that kick, it's the sound of that three thousand, right? Mm -hmm. Coming into you know coming into the Apollo, coming through an SSL, and then an SSL setting, you know. Yep. Um, on FY, when I tracked everything through the Apollo, that was more of just hitting the, I mean, hitting the SSL mm -hmm. and not too much tweakage going in, especially on the kick. And then on the kick, I did my adjustment afterwards. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that makes Anything sense. Everything else was more on the front side. Um, you brought up a good point. I wanted to actually show one other thing that I used um, that I, it's been a recent discovery. And I think we talked about it on a, a little bit on, let me look on my mix thing real quick. There's another. Um, just while we're on this topic, there's mm -hmm. another device. Oh, no, I'm also noticing uh, a lot of these are mono. A lot of the stuff you're bringing in from the NPC is not stereo. Is yeah, that on purpose? I, um, yeah, that is on purpose, and that's how I would normally have done it. Right back in the mm -hmm. day, I would have, everything would have been an individual track spread out across an SSL, right? So I still do it the same way. Now, what I did do in stereo is the 808. Mm. So I kind of picked my spots. There's something I was looking for. Which I may have. I'm sorry. Uh, this. This is my other cheat code. <laughs> I'm going to give up my. We talked about this briefly before. Yep. I don't know how many people are aware of this one. This is the Century Tube Channel Strip. I friggin' love this. See, I picked <laughs> up the language. I'm awake now. The language is better. Um, for those who don't know about this, this is another one of my mm -hmm. shortcut cheat codes. What I love is you on the left side, you have your two preamp. Same thing where we can, whether we're using tape saturation or not, we can sort of enhance things and, and, and manipulate things immediately. Also on it, you have a compressor, so you can slam things if you want. You can manipulate the EQ as you can see here. I'm really boosting the mids, mm -hmm. right? Because I needed, I wanted, the, you know, I needed this this particular sound, which was a snare. I needed it to have some butt. I needed it like thick in the thighs. Yeah. So I call I call mid right there. I, I call it thick in the thighs, and because uh -huh. it's at like that three hundred area. It's like it's yeah. the real low mid. It's you know it's, it's not a low low, but it's yeah. yeah. And you see, I got that cranked, very mm -hmm. subtle, very subtle on the, on the you know lower. And then I also dropped some of the highs because I needed I needed this the snare sort of drier and fatter, right? Mm -hmm. And then I and I compressed it, and then and then I also you see the two preamp is up high. Yeah. yeah. So that's also for those who don't know about this. This is an amazing tool, and it's not complicated for some people who are get intimidated by plugins or more sophisticated plugins. So this is a great tool. I, I have not yet to really explore the presets in it. I'm sure it has amazing presets. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons I haven't even explored the presets is I get such immediate satisfaction from tweaking it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Uh, yeah. I had a question question from chat. Have, do you ever use the Avalon 737 tube channel strip? Um, the Avalon was a staple when I when I came up. So um, mm -hmm. I I might be Avaloned out. Um, <laughs> yeah. I haven't used an Avalon in, in all honesty. I haven't used an Avalon in a decade. I own an Avalon. I don't even know where it is. Um, the Avalon is an, 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 a great tool. Mm -hmm. I would say my first 10 years in the business almost every record i worked on not every but i would say probably 75 percent of the records i worked on were recorded through an app like the vocals were done through an avalon yeah that was like a staple in you grew up into any studio there would be an avalon 737 there ready to yeah. give you just a very it's a super clean sound right like it, it just doesn't super clean it's i think for especially in hip-hop and r&b it was same thing, that immediate gratification, right? You've got EQ yep. on it. You can tweak the sound right there. You're running. It's tube, but it's super clean. Mm -hmm. um, you know. But as I progressed in and started working, I think prior to working with Dre, you know, I was a big Avalon guy. I was. I, I had certain go tos. When I started working with Dre, I started seeing his sick. You know, his um signal. His his chain. Mm -hmm. And I started really, and that's when I really started experimenting with uh, 
just the signal chains and really got into tube techs and you know yeah things of that nature and that just sort of honestly i never went back Mm -hmm. so um so what's kind of like your go-to nowadays for vocals well it is it doesn't change i I would say all right so the neve Mm -hmm. uh the neve tube tech is is the go-to so sony mic neve tube tech is the go-to that is yeah honestly that is so many people's signal chain i don't want to give all the artists away but everyone from kanye to travis scott blah 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 that's the signal chain like yep. that's been my go-to probably for a decade with that said i've recently discovered a burl 500 pre mm-hmm. that i really like um you know and the other thing and you can't beat this like with ua i can use a fairchild <laughs> Like a $50,000 compressor. Yeah, I don't have access to it. I mean, I'm just keeping it honest. I don't have that. I don't have a $50,000 pair of child in here. Like, yep. I, you know, and with UA, I do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I, so um, my go to these days is a fair child because mm-hmm. I can. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And Man, the way the, the uh, I assume you pull, pull the time down to one, right? Or one or two. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I just man, yeah, that, that's it. It's, it so, works. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's on. So in all honesty, that's what I use. Um, but my go-to over the last decade has been the the Neve Tube Tech com- combo, yep. usually with Sony mic. Um, I tweak it if I, I have a Steven Slate mic, which I can obviously emulate different mics sometimes. Mm-hmm. And based on that, if I'm in a 47 setting, I may you know 47 or 67, I may tweak. But um, since uh since i've had the fair child that's been you know i yeah. on vocalists not on rappers yeah i the fair child on on singers not not on rappers gotcha what's uh, uh what do you do differently uh when you're doing rap no pretty much i go back to the to the the tube tech um mm-hmm. neve combination i think it's just it just uh just got a nice raw like a really like nice weight to the vocal and and mm-hmm. so on and so forth i think rap tends to be a little aggressive for um the fair child to me just yeah. the in my opinion and i don't necessarily the the fair child makes things sound so so delicious and warm to me and so forth and i i prefer that more on on a um on a singing vocal than i do a rap vocal gotcha um, the rap vocal that, that you know the neve gives me that um well i mean really it's the tube tech right it's really mm-hmm. i mean the neve is the setting the is the sauce but it's the tube tech that's bringing out yeah that, you know, well, it's the re- the response of the tube tech, uh, and this is the CL one B. Uh, for yep. anyone that's curious, which one we're which one we're talking about here, it's the CL one B, which is it's an optical compressor, but unlike the LA two A, you actually get attack release controls, ratio controls. You get so much finer control over the sound. Uh, it's really you know one of the you're getting a smooth, yeah. really great smooth response, but still a lot of control and speed, uh, which you don't find with other optical compressors. And that yeah, that's what's made the CL one B such a standout. Yeah, and this is one of the things I'd love to point out right now. The UA CL1B is so good. Since I've had the plug-in from you guys, I don't use my real one. Damn, dude, we're putting all we're putting your hardware out of business. And proof, <laughs> proof, proof. It's not plugged in. It's Hasn't chilling out. In. So I'm not lying. Yeah. So anyway. Um, well, uh, uh, thanks for taking the. We kind of sidetracked here. We're talking yeah. about vocal chains and stuff like that, but we were in the, we were in the middle of, of breaking down the track. So we got through yeah. the Moog bass, the soft lead. I think we were about to get kind of to the B section area. Yeah, yeah the, the B section right thing. here. The first thing. Well, let me take. Uh, what's a quick way to get out of all the solos? Uh, option click on one of them. Option uh, click on. Yeah. Uh, cool. yeah. There you go. Oh. I want to get out of all of them. Oh, uh, so up top uh, in the global at the very top of the Luna window, there's a tiny mm-hmm. S. If you click on that, very top. Yep, uh, by the transport to the right. Yep. See, see everybody. I'm still learning too. So we're all we're all together in this. <laughs> there you go. All right, cool. Now the one thing I wanted to point out right now, the, the next sound that I really introduced was this choir sound. I wanted, I wanted just a release. I like, I like the, I like tracks that grow and you know, evolve and so on and so forth. So I needed this release, and what better sound than a choir? Mm-hmm. And then on choir, I wanted to manipulate the choir, so I have a little altar boy on there, just just giving me some a little bit of kind of chorusy, 
formented effect where I could play with it. But do you have it pitched up quite a bit, or is it just kind of just chilling on there? Oh, just chilling on there, and mm-hmm. and, and and I have a I have a and I, if I'll click on it, I'll show it. I have a preset which is the octave down, the classic DJ one. Yep. Really, you know, adding that and you know, giving that. And like, yeah, a little 50-50 on that. It's perfect. Yeah. And by the way, this is a Mellotron um, choir. So yep. from, from a mel- real Mellotron, so or a real reissue Mellotron. <laughs> I was about I was about to ask, old school or new yeah. school? Yep. New, new school. So this is this actually went through quite a bit of manipulation as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the on the tracking side yeah let me see if if it'll still come back up what, what was there let's see mm. uh yeah scroll back to the top nope nope so, so, yeah but um there was some manipulation going on here with this mm-hmm. and once again i recorded this quite a few times so this might maybe on the this iteration that survived didn't have that on it i don't know gotcha so. It was Japanese whiskey time too, so. <laughs> so I added this fire, I manipulated it, and now I wanted, as you can see, the track drops. And in theory, this would be some lead vocalist doing something here. Whether there's a rap track or a singer track, I would have a vocalist here. And then we drop into some, some you know, straight rap. Now, and now I want to point out, so there's a whole new set of drums that comes in here. Mm-hmm. This is the 808 that I tracked in stereo. There's a hi-hat here. This is all MPC Live. Okay. And so why why make the 808 stereo and keep everything else mono? The, you know, I, I play around with 808s. Um, I learned some of the tricks from the Fruity Loop guys. And um, in terms of the, in the fruit, in FL, there's some the ways they manipulate the 808 and so on and so forth. So now when I'm when I'm with the MP and I'm using the MPC for 808s, I'm always just trying to be creative with how I use it. And in this case, I wanted them wide. I, you know, we dropped the move base out, the 808 comes in. So I wanted you to hear it in a stereo parameter versus just right up the middle. Yeah. I really wanted the 808 over here. So it's a little bouncy because I also have it coming in with this vocal chop. So mm-hmm. I have the vocal chop coming out with you at the 808 because I really wanted the energy. So the whole idea of this section is uh, insert rapper, right? Yep. We have this release, whatever. If it's this, if I got a lead vocalist doing some part, whatever, it drops right into this rapper. And I wanted the, I wanted to bring the energy. So I'm already, I'm already envisioning the song. You know what I mean? I'm already like, and I wanted the eight oh eights over here for you. Uh-huh. I love yeah, that. I wanted to, yeah. So almost rather than just hitting you here, mm-hmm. I wanted it hitting you here. Yeah. And almost leaving the space right here for I insert vocal. Man, I hope everybody watching right now, back. This is so 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 important. You're thinking with the end in mind. You're producing like we're, you're still in the creative flow of things, but you, at this moment, you're building a beat. You don't have a vocalist in the room writing something right no, now. No, right? But you so still you still know. I gotta leave. I'm making space. I'm making sections yeah. that flow from one thing to another. You know, you know, and I'm in here rapping on my own. I'm in here. I don't have any raps, but if I had any rap, you know, I'm, uh-huh. I'm doing it. You know, and right. um. But it's that, it's that forward vision that, like... Yeah. Sometimes I even go as far as to even record myself freestyling, which which I'm a terrible rapper, mm-hmm. but just so I have a vocal in there. So, you know, I, I keep a... <laughs> At the ready. Seven by me. Uh-huh. And um, I'll, I'll lay down something just to have a vocal in there, just to even imagine, okay, what would Jay-Z sound like or whatever, you know, whatever said rap right that i fantasize about that could be on the song yeah uh, I'll, I'll even go as far as to do that but yes i'm always thinking when even while i'm making a track i'm trying to be creative but at the same time i'm also trying to hear what what kind of record would this be you know what mm-hmm. i mean like what you know as i'm as i'm shaping the record and orchestrating because i have a process where i tend to like to generally do a skeleton and then present the skeleton to an artist let the artist insert some ideas into it and then customize it mm. to the part, you know, to the you know to the song. Yeah. So when I don't have that yet, I have to use my imagination, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's that's what that's what this track is. It's literally the journey and a glimpse of my mind of okay, what would happen next? You know, yeah. oh, you know what? I need energy. I need these drums. I need okay. So these drums are a little bit more of the youthful sound of drums in terms of like. For anyone who knows, they know these kids have all these kits that they love and mm-hmm. go-to kits. I have them too. 
<laughs> yeah. We can't can't keep them away from you. Yeah, you know, I got to be in tune. I'm I'm like, you know, I'm like lurking in their chats. Uh-huh. You know, you know, I, you, know not, you know, I can't I'm not one of those guys that could sit there and watch a kid play video games all day and be on Twitch, for, you know, 10 hours watching somebody play video games. But mm-hmm. I have to lurk in the in in the Twitches here and there. And uh-huh. I get my little I get my little bits and pieces and I <laughs> you know, take it home and I'm like, you know, so Bring I've got all those drums. Mm-hmm. So I knew I needed it to drop with the energy and so on and so forth. So that's yeah. where we're here. So we're coming out of this choir. We're coming into the energy. Which is which is great. All I did, honestly, is I moved the loop down here. I tracked it right in that spot, you know, mm-hmm. which is great. You can just, which I, lo- I love Luna. So yeah. Once again, we're controlling the gear. I just put it right here. I got my MPC right over to the side. Mm-hmm. And I just... I just tracked it right, right, right into where I wanted it. Yeah. So everything that's in sync, I'm literally just going right to where I want it and tracking it right in. I mm-hmm. create a track. I add, like we said, on the front side, you can add right on the recording section. If so, if we went in here, I add whatever I want to add, you know, going in yep. or not. And and it's what I love about it. It's it's media gratification. Yeah. It's not slowing down my workflow. So even though I'm taking this extra step to sort of record each sound individually. I'm not, you know, like that's one when somebody asked me that when I do that, you know, oh, we work, I work so fast. Uh, does that work flow down your workflow? Not at all. It's like, it's so immediate, it's so immediate gravitate, boom, track, record, done. Mm-hmm. You know, Chop, yeah. you know, yeah. edit it, blah, 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 you know what I mean? I, you know. It, become, I, it becomes I, second nature to just like, yeah, yeah become, boom, record, you know, duplicate, yeah, start you know working on your arrangement, trim, yeah. You know, trim it, boom, and I'm, you know, it's right there and I'm, I'm right, I'm, it's right and I'm just moving, you know? Mm-hmm. So there's no loss of workflow or anything, you know. We go down and and moving down the track, and you know I'll keep keep going a little bit. Um, the last thing I you know that I really got into is I wanted just I wanted another space section, but with a different element going on. So it's not a choir going on. I needed to get I needed to get I needed to go off into space in the future. Yeah. So same thing, another release part. Maybe we'd approach this part of the song differently vocally. Maybe instead of a vocalist coming to this part, maybe the rapper is still doing something. Maybe more of a chant with maybe a vocal harmony thing behind it. But I'm already, same thing, I'm thinking like, what could this be? But I want to take the audience, so if the rapper's on stage, maybe he's doing a call and response kind of part. And then he drops back into, you know what I mean? So that's, that's what I'm thinking about. So I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't do the, you know, the chorus verse, chorus verse. I yeah. really wanted to take this, you know, I'm like, okay, I really thought about this one in more of a live performance. Like, yeah. Man, know, and I was, yet again, yeah, like I, that's, that's such a, such a, a mature way of thinking about it. And, and really, you know, it kind of separates just, you know, making a track, making a beat just for, you know, following the standard verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, whatever, like to yeah. be thinking, man, I, I'm, I'm envisioning this up on stage. I'm seeing this in front of a hundred thousand people. What's gonna get? What's gonna? What's gonna lift them up and give them that moment for the light show? And then like, yeah, boom, this back into definitely it. Definitely me thinking more exactly. It could, let's make a track that's more festival ready. Mm-hmm. Exactly, you know what I mean, it's got these, these, and that's kind of like what EDM does, right? It's got those rises and then the, yeah. the fall and that, you know, the craziness. So yeah. I was thinking definitely more in that pattern, in that thought process with this track. Um, so, you know whether it had a traditional chorus or whether we use the releases as some sort of chorus moment or, you know, blah, 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 that could, that could be, and it, it would be very easy to make a chorus out of any of these sections if I needed to, like, let's say the artist was like, oh, I need a proper chorus. I could easily take one of these sections, you know, and easily make it a chorus. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So well, what's do what's doing the crazy, wibble, wibble, what's, where's R2D2 coming from? That, that I'm having fun with, the oddity oh yeah man that is the oddity making that (laughs) um honestly that original version of that the first inclination of that was coming from uh analog keys Mm -hmm. uh, electrons analog keys um that one didn't work out that didn't make the cut yeah so we ended up going to oddity um which uh, you know for everyone who's familiar with these synths and everything you know any of those really any of these deep synths like the OB6, the Oddity, um, the Moog, Moogs, you can find certain sounds that, to me that venture into what I call just I'm in space. They, they, they call the future. Where you're talking about more less musical sounds, 
mm-hmm. and more sound design sounds, more noise and manipulating the noise and, and the, you know, the frequencies and they become more RF sounds and those types of sounds. Yeah. I personally love those sounds. Um, I, I love um, movie scores and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Like, like many times I, I'll have um, movies like Prometheus on the, on the screen or the Blade Run, you know, Blade Runner yeah. with my, on my screen to inspire me by so those textures tend to be um and something came up in my discord chat room that's really cool too i do a lot of field recording i don't know how many people out there do that Mm -hmm. i do a lot of field recording where just getting sounds from life whether i'm in nature whether i'm in traffic whether i'm in a cafe Mm -hmm. whether i'm in an elevator or you know getting out sounds and i incorporate those kind of sounds in my tracks so when i'm doing those kind of rf textures and those things that's kind of like for me it's texture you know it's textural and so then I, with, with no, field recordings, do you just like do you just drop them in, or do you try to make loops out of them? Like, what's how? how yeah, do you I, use I them? tend to I tend to drop them in and make loops out of them. But same thing, I love manipu- I love the manipulation. Thank you. I love the manipulation of this is when the tape saturation is really cool, right? Because mm-hmm. a lot of field recordings can be really dirty. Yeah. Right. So rather than just be scared of the dirt, I just try to like manipulate the dirt and mm-hmm. like and, and, and further enhance the texture. So a lot of the field recordings for me, I run through tape. Um, yeah. I'll run through tape. I'll, 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 I'll EQ the highs down some. You know, I'll definitely EQ the lows out of it because, because you field recording, there's a lot of bottom in it. You always got to cut the bottoms out of it. Mm-hmm. And then, um, and then I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll manipulate them as loops. Yeah. Um, and, and in many times, I'll have them running the whole length of the track. I might take them on journeys. Like, I might be some automation mm-hmm. with, with uh, you know, where it rises and falls and i also i might also automate the pitch one thing that's really cool about doing a sound design you know field recording is when you manipulate the pitch of like a sound effect it's really yeah it really gets you know almost yeah it's really it it can be creepy at times Mm -hmm. but sometimes it can really also go with the music really well and the ebbs and flows of the music yeah so well, that's, that's been something I've shown a couple times on in office hours here is like using the because uh, in Luna there's clip pitch so you can you can take the entire pitch for a clip move it up move it down uh, so I've shown that even on like drums or, you know like taking like a drum loop using the pitch to like here's you know bring the verse down like you know a third or whatever wow. make it this lower tone and then bring it up for the chorus or vice versa like uh, same thing with field recordings or just anything where it, yeah. uh, you gotta that, teach me that mm-hmm. <laughs> you gotta show me that I, I, need, <laughs> I need to know everything this can do I gotta make I gotta make it fly uh-huh. when, I, when I finish with Luna Luna's gotta fly Absolutely. I, need, I need to know all the tricks um, so that, that you know that's kind of my thought process I'll, I mean a bit of my process and so on and so forth um, one of the things I wanted to talk about which is a new feature in Luna 2 mm-hmm. is we've got and and I can't Everybody works differently. Um, I tend to like to present different ideas to the artist. Yeah. It could be the same track, but I might have three different versions of it. So for it's, there's a new feature in Luna where you can, you can bookmark it. Mm-hmm. And this, for me and my workflow, is so necessary. Because, for instance, within the track, I might have a whole different way I've manipulated the drums and what effects I'm using on them and so on and so forth. So I need to save that inclination of it. Yeah. Right. And then I have another version of it where, okay, I've manipulated it this way and they might be the same drum sounds, but it's a completely different interpretation of it. Mm-hmm. Right. Because I don't know if this artist might like it more subtle. He might like it like, Oh wow. Look at this distorted, distorted, aggressive version of it. Look at this really five B modulated, you know mushroom mushroomed out version of it yeah. and i can do that within i can save just with bookmark i can save three four or five different versions of it all within the same session yeah and that's that's great for me right because that's that's how i need to present it and i need to be able to jump back and forth but i also need to go back to my original thought because i don't want to fuck that up mm-hmm. excuse me i don't want to mess that up i'm sorry family friendly because you know i i need that to be okay, this is my original vision and this mm-hmm. is my main version of it. So I always need to go back to that. Yeah. You know, I don't ever want to lose that. But I also need to present these other ideas because it's like I'm going into this artist and I'm playing this song for them. They may say, oh, wow, man, this trippy version is, I didn't, oh, I didn't, I had no idea. Oh, I love that. That's everything. Yeah. This, this is it. You know what I mean? And then a week later, they may go back and say, you know what? 
That was tripping. That was too trippy. <laughs> we go back to the other version. Yeah. That, if, you know, anybody knows. Um, <laughs> if anyone's worked, right. with the, worked with the artist before, right? Like, that's, that's all they do yeah. is they want to tra- yeah. time travel back and forth. And, you know, I worked with Kanye West for eight years. You know, the, the song is never done. Even when the song comes out, it's never done. <laughs> right. the, song, the song may be out and iTunes, you know, three weeks later, and he'll be like, yo, you know, Trey, that trippy version you brought, let's bring that back. I need that. You know, and you'll be like, okay. And, <laughs> and now with this, I could just, it, it's instantaneous. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, and, and it's cool, too, that, you know, there's, there's two, the, the thing I really like about how they implemented this is there's versions and bookmarks. Right. And it, it yeah. can be it can be it could be confusing to some people. Like, why would you need? Aren't they essentially the same thing? Kind of. It, it's kind of kind of one. And, and like, we, we, you know, I think to explain it simply is one is within the session. Right. You can have your different elements and that's bookmarks to me. That's within a session. Mm-hmm. And then you can have when you save different versions, then you have different versions of the, the whole session. So, for instance, um, I really see that. And obviously, there's many applications for it, but the, my immediate thought is that's from like in mixing. Yeah. Right. You have your mix. You know, you have your 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 lighter mix. Same thing. You have your, and and jumping between mixes to me, that is where you save different versions exactly. of the entire session. Yeah. Um, whereas within the session, bookmarks, I'm 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 tweaking different things, and I want to I want to save that idea. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's an idea. I, ooh, I, you know, ooh, I, I discovered something cool. Like maybe I have my main version, but I discovered something cool. So I want to save that, yep. but I don't necessarily need that to be my main version mm-hmm. because, you know, and then that may influence some something whole else. But so I love the options of that because the way I work, especially, I know a lot of young people today, they work in the immediate gratification work. They work, they finish, it's done. Yeah. I tend to revision. I, I tend to come back three days later a week mm-hmm. later, and that thought might have changed. So for me to have two or three different versions of the idea, it's great because now it's a week later, and version three that I saved the bookmark, you know, or you know, and we're not talking mixes, we're talking bookmarks. It may be it may be bookmark three that is everything to me. Yeah. As far as mixes, that's great because I don't know how everyone else does it, but I tend to mix. I go to the car. Mm-hmm. I play it off my phone and my ear pods and this and that. And so I need different versions. Yeah. So even when I go to my car, I'll already have car test one, car test two, car test three, mm-hmm. because I need to know. And if I can jump, you know, and you've got to have those different versions that, you know, and any mix of engineer that I know does this too. They'll have different versions of the mix that they present because they're ready to go. When the artist says, I like this, but you know, it's a little light me. It's a little light in the, you know, it's a little fluffy. I need it a little more aggressive. They can come right back. Oh, oh, you need it more aggressive? Cool. Boom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> here you go. Yep. I already have that. I already have that ready. Oh, you need a vocal up version? Boom. Done. Here it is. Yeah. You know. Oh, oh, you need a version with all the strings and the live. You know. Boom. Done. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, and the cool thing too, like the, the what I love is you know so the the keyboard shortcuts for them. Apple S is bookmark. So a lot of times, I don't know if you guys are like me, but like I'm constantly pressing Apple S, and this to me becomes more of a breadcrumb in a way. So I'm like, cool, like you know, I'm liking this idea. You know, and the night I love that it's no longer you're not saving the file name. The file name stays the same. Your session is called your session, uh, but by hitting Command S, you're now going in there and you're saying, cool, this is uh, you know, this is in good spot. Like I'm just basically writing notes to my future self in case I want to come back to a moment in time to my like. Exactly. There you go. Che, late night version one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, and then, as you mentioned, like having having versions, uh, one of the one of the cool advantages of uh, saving things as new versions is, especially when you go to export your mix, uh, it automatically puts the version name as part of the file name. So it'll be the name of your session dash the version name that you have dash main, you know, or whatever That's, output it is that you're bouncing from. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's, it's, you know, a helping you keep track of what you're working on, but it's also kind of helping you keep your mixes and your exports organized at the same time. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, do we have any good questions? I'd love to answer some good questions. Oh yeah, absolutely. The, uh, we got some, some people asking, uh, questions about using machine, uh, with Luna through the sync as well. Uh, are you familiar much with machine? I know you've been using MPCs I, I a bunch. Am. Machine comes up as a software plugin, though, so mm-hmm. I, I think you'd have to, you know, you could use machine, but 
Um, oh, well, there's a new machine that's coming out. I don't know if everyone got it. Obviously, if they're using the standalone, they could use it and, and manipulate it just coming in, mm -hmm. the standalone. But if you're talking about the previous version of the machine, it would come in as software. Yeah. So, you but, know. In the, but I do. I will say I've got the M machine MK3 over here. Uh, it does. It actually has an audio interface built into this one. So even oh, though yeah. it's not a standalone one, it is the one with the audio interface built yeah. into it. Uh, yep. So what I, the way I've got it hooked up in my rig is I've got a st I've taken the stereo out from there and running that line into my Apollo. Uh, so yeah, lately what I've been doing is running the standalone machine. So not the plug-in version of it. Run the standalone. Yeah, the standalone machine of software, mm -hmm. and then recording. That's cool. And then That's and then literally following the same exact same process you were doing with the three thousand and with the live. I'm using that exact same process, uh, but with machine. Wow. And you're doing it with the software version of it, not even the new standalone version. Mm -hmm. That's that cool. I've never, I've used um, K Trinata actually uses the standalone version of, of Machine as well. Yeah. I've never really used the standalone version too much. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've always mostly used it as a plugin. Yeah. But that's cool. That's that gives you that. Yeah. So you have total flexibility over it depending on which version of Machine you have. Exactly. And then if you have an older version, you can you can drag and drop the audio and manipulate the audio. On a on a see, lunar track. See, that's the thing. I, that's the thing I like about working that way, right? Is that way I, I, I can have the best of both worlds. So I can either just track it in, and um, if if I like the balance, I like what I, ca I got in there. Cool. But if I want you know to break it out into the stems, yeah. just drag and drop audio back into my session, and uh, and I, you can yeah. do this with the MPC Live, I think, as well, right? You can. Yeah, uh, I don't use the MPC Live software. I don't want to criticize Akai right now here. <laughs> um, so we, we won't. We'll talk about the MPC software, but um, the the hardware is great. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, well, so the other question that came up here was uh, wondering what what MIDI interfaces are you using to for all your pieces? Obviously, you got a lot of gear in the room. Uh, are you do you have a MIDI interface for each one? Or are you using I one do. master? I use I use the Mio USB um, okay. USB to MIDI. Um, I have about literally I own about eight of them. <laughs> um, you know, you obviously have to have a hub. Mm -hmm. I don't. What I don't do, which I could do, is obviously I could have one device see the master and just go through and, and lock everything through MIDI. That The reason I don't do that is just um, preference. There's no reason not to. Mm -hmm. um, I like kind of working on that individual device when I'm working on it. So whatever I'm syncing that device, I'm pretty much focused on that one device at a time. So I don't like everything chained together personally. Yeah. Um, but you could do that. Mm -hmm. you, know, you could just go through MIDI through. And, yeah. and have clock it that way and I've, just have one Mio, but I, I prefer to have individual control over it. Yeah, same here. And uh, I've only ever heard horror stories of trying to track down where the issue is when you're using through. It's like, you're like, wait, all right, so it's getting to this one, it's getting to yeah. the, my, this synth, but why is this synth not seeing it today? It worked yesterday, what's going on? And you discover yeah. that like you had a track soloed in your NPC or you had something that like, yeah. just prevented and, and, the flow. And you got one of them's got lag in it and you're like, which uh -huh. one is the lag? You know, which one is, you know. So no, it's, just direct connections to each one. Uh, yeah. well, so that's cool that you use uh, the Mio and that's basically, like, it's a USB to like a one one by one MIDI yeah, interface. I don't know if we could see it, but it, it's it's this. It mm -hmm. comes like this. It's a USB on one end. Yep. It's in and out through on the other end. Um, nice. Or in and out. You know, is it in out? Through? I think it's just in out, right? Yeah. Let's see. Oh no, I think it. Yeah, you're right. Just in out. Mm-hmm. Yep. Nice. I've got the uh, I've got the big brother to that one. I've got the Mio XL and the XM here in the studio, uh, which it's similar except it's a rack mount interface with ten. Uh, total uh, MIDI's in yeah. and outs, uh, but it also has U USB connections for being able to run USB devices. Uh, which, yeah. I, yeah, again, I found uh, some people were watching yesterday. Uh, we had Fab Dupont on. We were showing off uh, linking together Ableton with Luna uh, using the IEC bus, which is you wow, know, the internal. Cool. It's basically the internal MIDI routing and it's built yeah, into, internal into the MIDI Mac. routing. That's cool. Uh, it works really well. There's, it's actually funny that has more delay than using. Uh, using like a, a MIDI interface. Really? Uh huh. I would. I wouldn't. Wow. Okay. You wouldn't expect. You wouldn't expect it. I wouldn't, but, uh, I wouldn't have thought that at all. Yeah. But that. That's. That's. You just. You just gave me an idea in terms of you, Luna and Logic. Thank you. Uh -huh. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, the. Uh, and so what's one of the things that we that we ran into yesterday? He was. Uh, he was syncing up his OP1, uh, and he just plugged in USB, OP1 USB into his keyboard <laughs> on his laptop, or uh, on his desktop. Yep. Oh, what, what happened to those knobs? Man, 
Teenage Engineering, shout to it, right? They yep. saw me with my missing knobs, and I shout out to Teenage Engineering. I love them for this. They they saw me, and they were like, Che, we got you. We're not going to let you be out there and make it without any knobs. Yeah. They, and then, So they sent me, right? You know what they sent me? An entire new keyboard. <laughs> so, wrong part, wrong part. <laughs> yeah, so Teenage Engineering, I love you guys, but I need knobs, not keys. My keys are good. <laughs> keys, keys are good. Are they're flawless. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the new keyboard. If I ever need a new keyboard, I need knobs, baby. <laughs> get, anyway. get the man some knobs. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I digress. But he, so we were showing off, you know, syncing, you know, multiple devices. Uh, and if, if you guys were watching yesterday, you remember, uh, you'll remember Fab was dealing with like the kicks were coming in early, and we were trying to adjust the delay inside of Luna to, to push it back. It wasn't working for him, so we just, you know. Uh, we're doing a live show, so he just pulls it, moves the audio back. After the show, I was like, "Hey, try it. just try it. test this. Try putting it into a different USB port. Put it into a, a different USB port on this machine, and it was perfectly in sync again." Wow. Uh, and so I saw someone in the chat had, had pointed out that USB MIDI over USB is sometimes not as reliable as actual just MIDI to MIDI. Uh, or a dedicated MIDI device, and there, yeah. there's some technical reasons behind it that I, I'm not sure about, but yeah. uh, I've experienced the that, same thing. That makes sense. That makes sense, right? Because at to some level, if you're going through USB, there's some conversion happening there, right? Mm -hmm. Where MIDI to MIDI, you're just sort of staying true to, you know, the device, if you will. Yeah. So I got a question for you. Uh, wondering where do you begin your productions? Uh, is it beats or rhythms or like what you know? Where would, where do you start? Honestly, I would say um, I kind of start with like, okay, what am I, you know, kind of some inspiration, like, oh, is, you know, my thinking of, I do have some direction in terms of my thinking of, even though it could, it could change midway through, mm -hmm. but is this, am I, am I thinking of something for a singer or am I thinking of something for a rapper? Am I thinking something K-pop? I'm thinking that also gives me direction, but I, I tend, I tend to start with melody. Um, mm. it's one of the other, it's honestly one of the other, and I'd probably say 75% of the time it's melody. Whereas maybe in the past, when I the younger me, 75% of it started with drums, yeah, maybe even a higher percentage. It might even been more like 85%. I would start a track with drums, MPC drums from the door. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, now it's a little bit the other way because I sort of I sort of reverse engineer the way I think. So I would say now it's 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 about seventy five percent melody, where I'm either, and a lot of times because I'm such a tweaker, I'm not you know I'm not the greatest keyboard player or anything like that. I'm playing around with with um, you know what I'm running it through, what I'm playing. You know, I might have an OB six, but then I'm pulling up all kind of different plugins on my console mm -hmm. or in Luna, uh, and I'm I'm just really tweaking, and to affect to find some kind of unique sound. And then I really bang out like different melody ideas. So mm -hmm. um, I tend to like, oh, oh, you know what? I'm feeling G minor today, and so I'm in G minor. This track, this track is all in G minor. Mm -hmm. So I, I have key. Uh, you know, I'm I was like, do you have? I was like, do you have some favorite keys? I'm working. I, I am working on that. I do have go-to keys, which is uh, my two favorites: a G minor and A flat minor. Mm -hmm. uh, but but I am expanding my palette because. I don't want the redundancy. And then what I would do is I'd transpose the different keys. I'd you know I do the the non keyboard play a cheap cheap thing of transposing the keys. But yeah. I'm, I am actually studying scales every day to 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 strengthen that weakness. Well, it's interesting that you uh, you pick two keys that uh, they're not just all the white keys too. Which you yeah. know a lot of people there you know if they if they do have a, a crutch or a default one it's you know C major A minor. Uh, just yeah. keep it keep it really easy. Oh, I, have, I, have a, I have a prolific K. He's one of the top K-pop songwriters. A friend of mine from Norway. Mm -hmm. That's his world. All white keys. That's his whole. <laughs> that's his deal. And I, I like. He's really a guitar player. So I, I give. Him, I, you know, I don't. I don't hate on him for it. But I, that's his deal. It's yeah. hilarious. We're in the studio. I just. I just crack up every time. I was uh I was, I was doing sound for a live show one time and, and the keyboard player he was same mode like he, literally every song he's there transposing the keys so he could play every song on just the white keys every song on the set like it that, was... that's yeah <laughs> I mean it, it's pretty funny I mean on one hand I get it but on another hand it's like that, that's why I I took it upon myself especially during COVID time 
to re uh just recommit myself to studying some theory and mm -hmm. really my foundation i do hand-ins again like i'm doing some hand-ins exercises and yeah i think that nature just to so by, by the way anyone else out there i hope you guys are staying on your musicianship and you're practicing and doing that with those things because technology is a cheat code but it's great you, you when you actually put, apply that and bring it to technology it, it it opens so much so many more possibilities so shout out to all those people that still practice and feel yep. you know, the same. Well, that's great too because you can practice and create at the same time, right? Like you can make you can yeah. make the act of creating part of your practice, and you know, and if you come into it with that mindset of like, cool, I'm here, like I want to practice my skills, I want to I want to really get into F minor today, I want to yeah. I want to make that my thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know about you, but for me, like, I'll start, I'll pull up a sound, start kind of like wanting to practice something within like 10, 15 minutes. I'm like, actually, I, I kind of like this stuff. Let me open up Luna. Yeah. Let me get, start yeah. recording something, yep. you know? Yep. That's exactly what it is. I'm, I'm, well, I'm always ready to record. So anything that I'm sitting at, if even if I'm sitting at a piano, I'll have a mic and, you know, I'll, I'll turn something, I'll turn it, turn it on. So it's ready to go. Mm -hmm. And then if I come up with something cool, I, I immediately record it because I, I'm one of those people. I I don't I don't have the, I never got the ability of that recall, so I can't. I'm not one of those people that could sit at a piano and and be like, oh, okay, I'll remember this tomorrow. I'll I, I'll lose it in ten minutes. Yep. So I have to record it right then. You know? Yeah. Well, and so you know, again, one of the one of the biggest things I'm always impressed with on your work is like is that the vision and, and kind of being able to see a path forward for a track or for a song was was there anything that kind of that you feel really helped you develop that skill you know i think i developed that skill out of necessity you know i wasn't you know i'm not, I'm not um which is funny right i actually can read music and i do have a good understanding of theory but um i didn't remember piano from like a kid and piano lessons and things of that nature so i wasn't a good musician mm -hmm. and i had a good I got a. I, I think I have a good ear in terms, especially in an ear in terms of understanding where a song could go. So I think I developed that skill over time to compensate because of of not being the greatest piano player or guitar player, and 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 you know being a hack musician. Yeah. Other these other sort of talents developed, and these other skills developed, and you know and really helped. And, and you know, enhance my you know I call them my superpowers now, right? Mm -hmm. And part of that is the vision of, of, you know, um, Flea told me one day I asked Flea about working with Rick Rubin, and Flea told me this, and some people may have heard me tell the story before, but what he told me was what Rick Rubin for us was what he did for us was he had a definitive opinion. So you always think of like what does Rick do, Rick Rubin? How is he as a producer and this and that? Mm -hmm. That that was an amazing point to me he was like he had a definitive opinion so i think i developed this skill set that even while i'm making a track and while i'm i'm fishing through ideas i kind of have a definitive vision of where i'm trying to arrive yeah so and that helps me that helps me with sound choices that helps me you know even though i'm going through this sonic exploration and i'm playing around with stuff i still have a kind of a a vision of where i'm going and where you know where i'm trying to get to mm -hmm. you know so yeah. to the you know to the opposite side of that so like then you know obviously yeah having having an opinion and being able to make a call like that's kind of when you're when you're a top level producer that that's your job that's your role that's what the label and the artists are yeah. uh, they really want you there for but then on the to the the contrary of that how do you know when something is not fitting how do you know when it's like okay this isn't the right vibe or like yeah i said this was great you know two days ago but now i, I think it's kind of poo poo yeah. Uh, um well there's two there's two ways to do it i call it there's one when i mean i'm just by myself right mm -hmm. so one there's one is the the easy way when you just play it for people yeah and, and if, if you don't if you get that loop you know that yeah you know, you know you get that that reaction that yeah that that's an immediate tell right uh -huh, yeah. like, okay let me let me go back to the drawing board on this yeah but we, but as most of us are we're you know t tend to be by ourselves right or we're in our own world in our own space so how do we sort of self-evaluate ourselves? I call it, I call it, um, and you know, this could be whatever religion you are. I call it my come to Jesus moment for me, but you know, it could be whatever, you know, come, come to Allah, come to Jehovah, you know, whatever your, whoever your guy is or, or your girl, you know, mm -hmm. um, you, you know, or, or they, um, <laughs> I, and what I mean by that is kind of being honest with myself. We all love what we, you know, we, 
of course, it's ours, right? We make yeah. it. We might make the ugliest painting ever, right? But we were like, oh, that's kind of cool because because mm-hmm. I painted it, right? Yep. Then you have to have the reality check of like, is it or is it really dog shit? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh-huh. So I, I think I've been good with that with myself, like of especially when I especially when I leave something and I come back to it, mm-hmm. which is one of the reasons why I don't really go for the immediate gratification. I will never really do something that day and send it to Kendrick or send it to Kai. You know, I always have to have that buffer of saying like, you know what, let me come back to this a day or two, you know, a day or two later. Let me hear it again. And if it, and if I still feel that magical about it, oh, cool, then I'm comfortable sending it out. Yeah. But a lot of times I come back to it, I'm like, ooh, I need to. I need to tweak some things. This. Let me, yeah, let me do this. Let me check, you know, because when you make it, you have that media gratification moment of this is amazing. This is this is the best thing since the Beatles, mm-hmm. you know, and then you have to come back and, and, and be like, R- is it, you know, <laughs> was I bugging? were the speakers just really, really yeah. loud? Like, yeah. You know, yeah. Was I really, really this or I really that? Maybe I was really tired. Maybe uh-huh. I was really awake. Maybe I was really caffeinated. <laughs> so I always have to have that reality check of revisiting something. And that's my process. Everyone's different. Mm-hmm. One of the things about the young people now, it's like, go, go, go. It's like, oh, that's done. Let's go, baby. It's yeah. done. Put it out. You know? Oh, yeah. What do you mean mix it? It's mixed. It sounds great. Let's go. And it's uh-huh. like, no. Let's, <laughs> let's, you know, so I come up through, you know, Dre was a perfectionist. Kanye's a perfectionist. So Lauren Hill was a perfectionist. So even now, when I work with any artist I work I'm a perfectionist, and I love the young people that I work with that are perfectionists. IDK, who I work with, Mio, who's a friend of mine now, he's a perfectionist. Uh, many of these young artists are perfectionists too. You know, obviously, you see Drake takes a long time to you know finish an album and this and that. His, you know, he's got Forty over there with him, who's a perfectionist. Mm-hmm. So, Kendrick Lamar is a perfectionist. So, I'm not mad at being a perfectionist. Obviously, when it's done, you know, at, at some point you have to be like, okay, this this baby is finished. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I don't want to owe it. I don't need. I don't need it overdone. You know, I had. It took a while for me to learn about steak, right? I used to get my steaks all well done because I didn't know any better. Now I know I need. Okay, let me get that medium. You know, mm-hmm. you, you know, you just get it right. So the same thing with the song. It's like you don't need it well done. You need it right in that middle middle ground. Man, you that, don't want it too rare either. Yeah, dude, that's the most. Uh, that I'm gonna. I'm stealing that analogy because that's that's one of my favorite ones I've ever heard. For how do you how do you know when a song is done? You want medium rare. You don't want it well done because we've all done well done before. And then you listen yeah. back to it. You know, it get, gets released. So you go back and listen. You're like, man, like yeah. I feel like that might have been better like a month before, like yeah. t- five mixes before that yeah, one. I, I think might have been it. I overcooked the hell out of that. You know, what I mean? there's uh-huh. too much going on, right? You know, what I mean? like, absolutely. Well, yeah. and. You know, so working with so many perfectionists, like how do you get them? You know, from a producer, the producer artist dynamic. How do you get a perfectionist who just wants to keep on working on the track? How do you get them over that hump to 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 be like, yo, trust me, this is it. Like this medium rare is delicious yeah. right now. Um, everyone's different. I would say with Kanye, it's definitely reaction. Mm-hmm. Um, when he's starting to get the reactions from people that he's playing stuff for and this and that. Um, He's he's he. I think he's got a good, and he's got a good. He's also got a good self meter as well. He's got a good self meter mm-hmm. of like, is this kind. Of, he's almost got. He almost says that. Is this kind of level? Of, uh-huh. is this, like, is this God level? You know what I mean? Like, is this is this you know is this Jesus level? Is this Kanye level? So, yeah. I think he can listen to something and be like, you know, it's here, and for me to use it, it needs to get to here. Mm. Um, other people aren't aren't the same. Other people will constantly. You know, you got to find that that it's it's almost I don't want to call it Jedi mind tricking somebody or or, or, or psychology, but it really is. Mm-hmm. It really is. You're 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 their support group. You're their you're their comfort zone. You're their you're blank. You're their blankie. You yeah. know what I mean, like, and you've got to get them to a point where they feel comfortable because it is such a personal thing to release it into the world, especially if you're dealing with an artist who hasn't been out in a while or a brand new artist. Right. Mm-hmm. Who's, taking their first really big step into the world. They're like, oh my God, my baby's going to It's so scary. It's so oh scary. My God, like, oh my God, other people are going to, you know, yeah. So it is really like, give me that damn song so you can put it out. <laughs> and it, it really becomes a serious tug of war. And I, I'm not, you know, this is no joke. I've, I've had some challenging moments with artists in terms of like fear, what I call fear of flying. Yeah. 
It, it's so real. It, it, especially, like you meant new artists, especially, man. It's so, because this is your, you yeah, feel like it's your one good. shot. You feel like it, they, yeah, right? a lot of times they're like, man, this is make it or break it. Like, if this thing doesn't hit, it, like. It's that Eminem soundtrack song, right? It's mm-hmm. that, you know, you know, it's the music, the moment, you know. I yeah. feel like every artist is like that. This they, they, They're like, they've got that Eminem song playing in their head and they're like, they're psyching themselves up. But right when they get to it, it's like, oh no, I feel like rabbit. Like, stop ready. I'm, not ready. I'm so, like, no, you're at the point where he's, he's winning. Yeah. You're at the point where he's, he's good. He's, he's rabbit. He's whatever. He's, he's ready. Yeah. You know? Man. Well, uh, um, Che, dude, I, we, we could sit here and just chit chat all day. Like, and you're just, by the way, the, the amount of knowledge you've been dropping here, the chat is, the, the chat is well aware of just how, how amazing this conversation is and how it, it's, you know, it's not just about music. It's not about gear, technique. It's not about any of these things in the end of the day. It's about music and art and sharing right. that with other people. And man, you, uh, you do this, you do this better than anyone else, uh, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, you, and- Thank, and you know, thanks for having me again. And I want to like just in a, in a quick recap. I just want to recap, like you know, people um, really need to check this out. I mean, I'm not here to like, you know, down say you know bad things about anybody else's software or platform and this and that. But I think the one thing that UA as a company is just doing, and and one of the reasons, you know. I didn't just endorse you guys. I I was already a customer and mm-hmm. a consumer of UA, and you know before we started working together. And I just think you're intuitive in terms of what you're really listening to people's needs and wants. And and that to me is one of the issues that I've had with other companies because they become this thing and they're up on this mountain and they're not still listening to the community yeah. of of creators. And you guys are doing that, and you're, it's very intuitive. So, you know, and for me, I can only say you launched Luna, you know, right off the bat. You know, I was telling you about, hey, for me, da da da, and, and one point one, it's already already doing it, yeah. right? You know, and I already we've already talked about, you know, one or two or three more things that I would love to see from Luna, you know, in the in the future. But you guys are just so intuitive, and you're just on it, and that's what means everything to me with what I'm working with because. At the end of the day, that's exactly what it is. I want to make music. Yep. And I want tools that don't, you know, that help the process and enhance the process and keep, you know, flowing smoothly versus get in the way of the mm-hmm. process. Absolutely. You know? And for me, this is great. And we're just finding more, better, you know, more and more ways to incorporate Luna into my workflow. And I love it. And, you know, even just what you sh- shared for me with you, you know, you guys did with Ableton and Luna yesterday. Mm-hmm. That alone is like, oh. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. You know what I mean? Yep. I didn't even think of the way that you use machines. So I love these these sessions because not only am I sharing some of the things that I've learned and discovered in some of my process, I'm learning every time we do this. Yep. Man, and I, uh, I'm the luckiest person in the world because I'm the one that gets to sit here at the middle of all these conversations, and I've learned so many. Like this is it's been a crazy six months. Uh, it's actually six months a day past six months that Luna's been out. Okay, uh, well, with, happy happy six month birthday, Luna. Yeah, right. What a what a great way to celebrate it with uh, with one one coming out with all these new features and uh, you know again getting to hang out with amazing uh, producers and engineers and all along the way. Yeah. We've I've learned so much. There's a bunch of lunatics that have been here for every single show as well uh yeah, we've great. all we've all learned so much uh in the the and again it's just it's not always a technical thing it's there's so much to the uh, to the personal relationships to the musical relationship like all this stuff kind of matters and the, and the fact of the matter is is that you know we're making tools that help like you, you said the best way possible we're making tools that help you get to that as fast as possible yeah. um so yeah man yeah. Chay, the, and I, um in, in closing I would like to say, um, look out, we're gonna go on the campaign trail, right? You'll see the campaign signs for mm-hmm. my dog, Luna, <laughs> the, the mascot of Luna. Um, next, all, all on my socials, you're gonna see, vote for Luna to be Luna's mascot. It's a very gorgeous dog, um, yeah. well-trained. Um, you know, um, and so, look yeah. forward. To well, and uh, yeah, if people, if people do wanna- You need to rally around me in so, my campaign. So for people to, for people to join in on the the Luna for mascot campaign, uh, how, what's the best pay, best place for people to uh, get in touch with you and uh, they, they can get in touch with me on my IG, my Instagram, which is just Che Pope. I'm you know, there's only one Che Pope, hopefully. Yeah. Um, and you know I'm there, and you will see me posting 
I will post, you will see the Luna campaign pictures as we campaign for Luna to be the face of Luna. <laughs> Oh man, I, I love it! Can't I can't wait can't wait for this uh, to come up in a in a executive meeting of like, we have a very important topic to talk about yeah, today. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna have the you know I'm gonna have the signs and you know we're gonna make a sign everything you know. Oh, uh, that's so great. Yeah, you uh, know. Nice man. Well, Che, dude, it, it, such a it's pleasure great. hanging out with you, man. It, great, amazing! What a cool track to uh, to kind of showcase these new features and and to really break down your process and and get that step by step of of how you build up a track and how you. Uh, how you put Luna and UAD to work to make music with you? Um, Thank you. And I'm gonna um, I'm gonna actually finish the track, and I'm gonna just I'm gonna just put it out because I think it'll be a cool licensing track or something like that. Mm -hmm. Where people, any rappers, can just jump on it. I'm just gonna put the track out, so you know you guys can check it out and have at it, download it. I'll finish the track. I'm gonna I want to tweak the 808s a little bit. It's the, this is a great thing. Like while while we're talking, I've even heard things that I want to do to the track. Yeah. So I'm going to be the track. I'm going to drop it. Uh, you know, so. That's dope. Hey, have awesome. Oh, uh, well, Che, I really, really appreciate Thanks it, man. For having me. Yeah, thank and, you. And then, you know, everyone have a wonderful and amazing day. And create and keep creating. Mm -hmm. and, and please check out Luna. It's, yeah. It's fire. Like, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't endorse or talk about anything that I don't use mm -hmm. that I don't think is good. So. Yeah. Nice. Well, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Uh, have a great weekend. Get out there, make some music. Uh, we'll Don't be Fairchild plug-in. <laughs> Grab the scared of it. That's a fifty thousand dollar device you could have in your in your arsenal. <laughs> Use the Fairchild this weekend. Chase orders. Uh, we'll be back Monday morning uh, with our regularly scheduled office hours. So if you guys run into any issues or have any questions. Pop in Monday, 10 a.m. We'll be answering all those questions. And then next Thursday at 10 a.m., we're going to do a deep dive on all the new 1.1 features. Uh, yeah. So, again, if you guys have I've seen a bunch of machine questions, I've seen some other sync questions, bring all that stuff next week. We'll, we'll answer all you guys' questions, and we'll show you uh, in real time how to, how to put all these new features to work and dive even deeper into them. But until then, get out there, make some music, have some fun. Midi sync. Midi sync. Midi sync. I'm an old guy. Mitty's sick. <laughs> right, Young so. guy, learn that shit. Sorry. You heard it. You heard it. <laughs> All right. See you guys later. Family friendly. Oh, Got to work on my my profanity. <laughs>